friends, it's your girl Cha Cha reporting live from the Money Mantra, and we are back with another Forex education video. I created my channel to help as many people as possible become independent and profitable traders. So if that's something that you're looking for, you're definitely in the right place at the right time. Now, whether you are a new subscriber, you are a returning subscriber, or you're somebody who stops by the channel often because you love the way that I teach, I do just want to welcome you guys back and thank you for spending some time with me today. Now, in today's quick video, I'm going to be showing you guys a couple of different ways that you can optimize your chart, and this is going to help you feel more confident and maybe even become a better trader because it does take a bunch of these little tweaks. Trading is not really hard. It's just honestly a bunch of little things that once you figure out how they fit together, you can figure out how to make it work for you. Now, these aren't specific trading tips, but there are things that you can do to help optimize your chart. So if you've been looking for an easy way to learn how to navigate TradingView and you need a few tips as a beginner, this video is going to be perfect for you. Now, the first thing we're going to learn how to do is how to customize our watch list because our watch list is really where all of our currency pairs or assets are held. As you can see, mine is already a little bit organized. And I'm going to show you guys how to get it like this so that you can focus on the pairs that you like to trade. And as you guys can see, I have different ones for my active trades, my USD pairs, my JPY pairs, and so on and so forth. Now, the way that you do this is you click these three little dots right here on the watch list screen, and then you can click add section. Now, you can move this section. Let's just move it down to the bottom, all the way to the bottom. And let's just rename this USD pairs. Or you can name it whatever you like, daily pairs, daily trading, money makers, whatever floats your boat. Now, from here, you can search, click the plus sign at the top. And let's just say I wanted to add your USD. I would search for your USD and then I would click add. And as we can see, it's been added to my USD pairs watch list. Now, I already have a few pairs, and let's just say this is you. You already have your watch list, but it isn't organized. You can just drag those pairs that you want um, into the watch list that you want. And again, you can name this whatever you want. You can name it New York Session, Tokyo Session, Sydney Session, London Session, whatever floats your boat. Now, the second thing that you can do to maximize your chart experience is you can watermark your chart, which means that it's labeled, as we can see in the background, with the currency pair or asset that you're trading in addition to the time frame that you are looking at. The easiest way to do this is to click on the settings gear, which is here, which you can find at the top right of your chart. And to go to the canvas tab, once you click on the canvas tab, you wanna make sure that watermark is highlighted. Now, if I click watermark off, you can see how it disappears. Now, I'm somebody who likes to share my chart across different platforms, so it's helpful for not only me, but for my viewers to know exactly what they're looking at. So you can turn your watermark on. And if you want to change the color, you can change it to whatever color you like. You can change it to blue. And you can even make it um, very prominent and dark like this. I just like to keep mine at a certain uh, opacity just so that I know which currency pair I'm trading. Um, it doesn't have to be too loud. And that's just to keep it organized. And I just, go, I just chose purple because it's my favorite color. But... Again, you guys can do whatever you like, whatever floats your boat, whatever makes your chart feel comfortable for you. Now, another thing that you can turn on, which is something that I have on here, which is the countdown to bar close. And that's a really helpful feature if you're somebody who likes to get at the to get the best possible entry point as possible um, at the opening of the next candle. Now, you can turn this feature on by right clicking a chart. And then if you click countdown to bar close. You just want to make sure that there is a check to the left of it. That's how you'll know it's on. So you'll see that if I turn it off, I don't know when the next bar is going to open. I don't know when that next four hour candle is going to start. But when I right click and have countdown to bar close, I can see that the next four hour candle is going to start in about two hours. You can look at this on the 15 minute time frame. We can see that the next candle is going to start in about 30 seconds. And this is helpful for people who trade things that move really fast like cryptocurrencies or indices or even some commodities because looking at it on the one minute and five minute time frame could really be helpful for you. I'm not saying this doesn't work with Forex. I'm just showing you how this feature can apply and how you can use it for different time frames. Now, another thing that you want to have on your chart that it's helpful or at least it helps me 
Again, we're going to right click our scale and we're going to go to labels and we're going to make sure that high and low price labels is on. Now, what this pretty much tells us is the previous high and it also gives us a previous low. Now, this is helpful because when we're in a trade for a buy, the market is consistently creating higher highs and it's pushing price higher, which means that the high is always going to be increasing. Now, when you're entering a buy, your targets or your take profits should be to take out those previous highs. So let's just say we enter a trade down here or we set a buy limit in a previous support zone, which is a place where the market previously bought. We know that we would be able to potentially set our TP at 1.08267 because that was the last known high. Now, if you're going for a sell, this would be the same thing. If you are going for a sell, you would want to use those previous lows as your take profit areas. And again, as you adjust your time frame, whether it's the four hour, the daily or the weekly, you'll notice that these highs and lows do change sometimes, giving you a few different potential entry points. Now, the last thing I'm going to show you guys is how to make sure that your indicator financial values are on, especially if you are going to be using indicators like the stochastic or even following the strategy that I use, which uses key levels in order to help me determine my entry and exit points. Now, again, we're going to right click the scale. We're going to go to labels and we're going to make sure indicators and financial values label is on. You could have the name on as well but the values is what's really important. Now, for me, when I'm using my strategy, on the stochastic, there are three key levels. There have There's the bottom dotted line, which is the 20% line. There's the middle dotted line, which is the 50% line. And there's the top line, which is the 80% line. Now, if I'm going for a buy, I want to make sure that my stochastic has crossed above the 20% line. And here's an example of that here we can see it crossed above 20% and then there was some buying action there. If I'm going to get in for a sell, I want to see that my stochastic has crossed below the 80% line. We can see that's what happened here and that would have been a great entry to get in for a sell. And I know whether it's crossed above 20 or 50 or 80 because I can see the indicator's financial value which is the setting that we just turned on. So these are just a few things that you can do to maximize your chart and your trading experience. They're very simple tweaks, but they really do help you um, get comfortable in navigating the market and identifying what you're doing and ultimately really just staying organized because professional traders, they're not just out here doing anything willy nilly. They do have a method to the madness and that's why they're so successful. It's all about process and routine. So I really hope that this video was helpful. I hope that you guys applied these tips to your own chart. Please let me know in the comments below which tip was the most helpful and which one you are going to start to incorporate um, onto your trading view charts. Now, if you guys are interested in the way that I teach and you love more of it and you want to have me as a personal mentor, you'd like to join a community of traders and even have a structured learning environment where you can learn at your own pace on your own time, you can register for my e-learning platform, also called The Money Mantra, and the information is down below in the description box. Also, if this video helped you, don't forget to subscribe and share it with a friend. And that's really all I have for you guys today. Until next time, rich friends.